Good morning class. Our next topic is compound proportions, mixtures and rates of work. Compound proportions, mixtures and rates of work. And uh, under that topic, we are first going to discuss proportion. That will be our first subtopic. And we are saying any four numbers A, B, C and D are in proportion if A over B is equal to C over D. Any four numbers A, B, C and D are in proportion if A over B is equal to C over D. This simply means the ratio of A to B is equivalent to the ratio of C to D. And this also implies that A over C is also equal to B over D. As an example, let's look at the numbers 3, 6, 17 and 34. If you look at those numbers, the ratio 3 is to 6 is equal to 1 is to 2. Likewise, the ratio of 17 to 34 is also 1 is to 2. Therefore, 3 over 6 is equal to 17 over 34, which also implies 3 over 17 is equal to 6 over 34. The numbers 3, 6, 17 and, therefore, and, and 34 are therefore said to be in proportion. The numbers 3, 6, 17 and 34 are therefore said to be in proportion. Let's look at an example. We are told to find the value of A that makes 4, 10, A and 50 to be in proportion. As solution, if they are in proportion, then we have the list of the numbers as 4, 10, A and 50. And then we are saying if they, in, they are in proportion, then the ratio of 4 to 10 should be the same as the ratio of A to 50. So 4 over 10 is equal to A over 50. If you cross multiply, you will get 10 A is equal to 4 times 50. And therefore the value of A is equal to 4 multiplied by 50. Then you divide by 10, giving you 20. Fine, that is proportion. Then we also want to define continued proportion. We want to define continued proportion. And we are saying in the numbers A, B, C, and D are said to be in continued proportion if the ratio of A to B is equal to that of B to C and it's also equal to that of C to D. You see, the numbers, therefore, form a geometric progression. Because there is a, if you divide A by B, it gives you the same constant as B divided by C. It gives you the same constant as when we divide C by D. Therefore, because the ratio of successive terms is a constant, then the four numbers form a geometric progression. If we consider the numbers 2, 4, 8, and 16, then 2 over 4 is equivalent to 4 over 8 is equal to 8 over 16. Therefore, 2, 4, 8, and 16 are in continued proportion. Now, if A, B, and C are in continued proportion, then A over B is equal to B over C. A over B is equal to B over C. Therefore, if we cross multiply, we'll have B squared being equivalent to AC. And therefore, B is equal to plus or minus the square root of AC. Remember, the square root of any positive number has two possible answers. If you get the square root of 4, then you could either get plus or minus 2. And we reiterated this when we were dealing with formula and variation. We said whenever you are changing the subject of the formula, and then you are getting the square root, then you have to include the two signs. That's why we are saying the value of B, therefore, is equal to plus or minus square root of AC. In this particular case where we have A, B, and C, then B is called the mean proportional to A and C. B is called the mean proportional to A and C, and C is called the third proportional to A and B. C is called the third proportional to A and B. Let's look at an example. Find the mean proportional find the mean proportional to 3 and 6. Now, the mean proportional, 
has to be the digit in between 3 and 6. Therefore, if we let it to be x, then we expect that the numbers will be 3, x, and 6. So if we let our mean proportional to be x, then we are saying 3 over x should be equal to x over 6. That therefore means if we cross multiply, that x squared will give us 18, therefore giving us the value of x as plus or minus root 18. The square root of 18 is equivalent to 3 root 2. Therefore, it becomes plus or minus 3 root 2. Now, if A, B, C, and D are in continued proportion, then A and D are the extremes. We call A and D the extremes. And B and C are the means. Remember in the case, in the previous example, we were dealing with three numbers, A, B, and C where we said our b was the mean proportional. Now we have four numbers, a, b, c, and d, and we are saying they are in continued proportion. Therefore, we are saying a and d are called the extremes, and then b and c become the means. Now you realize that the ratio of a to b is equivalent to that of b to c. It's also equivalent to that of c to d, which gives us a constant k. Therefore, if you take each of the ratios individually, for example, if I have a over b and I equate it to k, then my a becomes bk. If I likewise, if I equate b over c to k, then my equation becomes b is equal to ck. And if I equate c over d to k, then my equation becomes c is equal to dk. We want to look at an example. And we are told, given that x is to y, is equal to 2 is to 3, we want to find the ratio of 5x minus 4y is to x plus y. 5x minus 4y is to x plus y. Now, we may, we may not be able to get the ratio when we are dealing with two unknowns, so we have to look for a way of making one or expressing one of the unknowns in terms of the other. There are two ways. The first one, since x is to y is equal to 2 is to 3, then we have it that x over 2 should be equal to y over 3. x over 2 is equal to y over 3, which is equal to the constant k. If you take the first fraction, x over 2, and we equate it to k, it gives us the value of x as 2k. And likewise, if we take the second fraction, where we have y over 3 being equal to k, then the value of y becomes 3k. So in this case, we are able to express both x, both x and y in terms of k, and therefore we can do the substitution in our previous uh, equation. Therefore, 5x minus 4y changes form to 10k minus 12k. Likewise, x plus y changes to the 2k plus 3k. Now the first bracket gives us negative 2k. The second bracket gives us 5k. Therefore, the ratio is negative 2k is to 5k, which if you divide by k, then we get the ratio as negative 2 is to 5. We say there are two ways you can deal with that. So we also want to look at the alternative method, where we are saying the ratio of x is to y is equal to 2 is to 3. That implies that x over y is equal to 2 over 3. That means if you cross multiply, you'll get the value of x as so that's y. Now we can make that as a substitution. Since we are able to express x in terms of y, then we will deal with an equation that only has y's as the unknowns, and that will be able to give us the ratio. So 5x minus 4y becomes 10 over 3y minus 4y, which gives us negative 2 over 3y. Then when we come to x plus y, the value of y, x was 2 thirds y, so it becomes 2 thirds y plus y, giving us 5 over 3y. Therefore, our ratio now becomes 5x minus 4y is to x plus y changes to negative 2 thirds y is to 5 over 3y, thereby giving us the ratio as negative 2 is to 5 gives us the ratio as negative 2 is to 5, which is the same solution as what we had obtained earlier. So whichever method you use, 
then we expect that you'll be able to arrive at the same result. We also want to look at another example where we are told if a over b is equal to c over d, that means a, b, c, and d are in continued proportion. So if a over b is equal to c over d, show that a minus 3b over b minus 3a is equal to c minus 3d over d minus 3c. Now, like we, we already know, whenever we are given a question on showing, we work on one side of the equal sign until finally we arrive at the result which is given on the opposite side of the equal sign. So we choose to use on uh, to work on the expression that is on the left hand side of the equal sign, which is a minus three b over b minus three a. Now, as part of the solution, then we have a over b is equal to c over d. This implies also that a a over c is also equal to b over d, as Aria mentioned. If that is the case, this implies that uh, if we equate a over c to a constant, it means, therefore, if you cross-multiply, that the value of a will be ck. And if you equate b over d to a constant, then you'll get the value of b as dk. Now, substituting kc for a, we've obtained the value of a as kc and the value of b as kd. So if we substitute in the expression that we had, the expression on the left hand side, which is a minus 3b over b minus 3a, then the expression becomes kc minus 3kd over kd minus 3kc. Uh, you realize that k is common to both the terms in the numerator, so we can factor out k, and therefore we'll get k into c minus 3d. Likewise, when you also look at the denominator, k is a common factor. Therefore, we also factor it out and we get k into d minus 3c. Now, since k appears in both the numerator and the denominator, we can cancel it out and we arrive at c minus 3d over d minus 3c. If you go back to the question, you realize that the expression that we have arrived at is the expression that was given on the right hand side of our equation. So we have shown that the two are equal. Alternatively, alternatively we can have it as uh, a over b is equal to c over d. Now if you cross multiply you'll get a d is equal to b c. If you divide by d both sides then you'll get a as b c over d. Now, because we've been able to express A in terms of B, C, and D, or in terms of C and D, then we can now uh, substitute in the expression that we had. So A minus 3B over B minus 3A becomes B, C over D minus 3B. Then we divide by, our denominator becomes B minus 3B, C over D, which is equal to B, C minus 3B, D over D. You realize here, just the way we deal with fractions, just the way we deal with fractions, we have decided to put BC over D minus 3B and our common denominator. You know, you know we normally take, if the denominator is just one, we take it to be the LCM. If you divide D by D, you get one multiplied by BC, it becomes BC. Likewise, if you divide the, the denominator in 3B is one. So if you divide d by 1, you get d, then you multiply it by negative 3b, it becomes negative 3bd. So that gives us bc minus 3bd over d. We also do the same to the denominator. Again, we put the two at our common denominator, and we arrive at bd minus 3bc over d. bd minus 3bc over d. Uh, it gives us now, you realize that in both the numerator and the denominator, we are dividing by D. So we can multiply both by D. And if we do that, then we get BC minus 3BD over BD minus 3BC. B is a common factor to, the, to both terms in the numerator and also in the denominator. So we factor out B. And we get B into C minus 3D. Then divide that by B. 
into d minus 3c. So that gives us c minus 3d over d minus 3c. Again, if you look back, you realize this is the expression that was given on the right hand side of the equation. So we have achieved our objective. So our lesson on uh, proportion heads there. We want to give you an assignment. We will use the KLB book. Exercise 14.1. Number one, you'll do question A and D. Number two, you'll do question A, C and E. Number three, you do A, D and E. Then you also do number four, six, seven and eight. Do those questions before the next lesson. Take care and stay safe.